Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial in Final Cut X, specifically all about 360 editing tools. And I'm making this video specifically for my friends at Adobe because I want to see their software improve to the point where I want to use that just as much as I want to use Final Cut. Um, yeah, I will say Apple did get me 20% off on my latest laptop, so this uh, video is slightly biased. But I do teach Adobe to my students at Academy of Art, so I like both software. Anyway, here's how we get started. I'm just going to start a new project here. And I'm just going to choose 360 as the format. Um, I'm going to go up to 4K res. Now, one thing I will say that I kind of am disappointed by with Final Cut, I wish they would improve and allow me to edit at 5K res or 6K res or 8K res in 360. Um, there are other ways you can do this if you go into custom, but I wish they would make it a preset for me or make it easy for me to create a preset so I can be like 365K and just pick it in the beginning here. So uh, one improvement that they should be working on. I'm going to call today's video um, Day in Time Lapse because it's all time lapses. Okay, and then we hit OK. So now we have a blank slate here, and I'm just going to drag in the footage. So you already have to have footage exported before doing this. So you see these are all my shots from uh, GoPro Fusion. You can see my resolution is a lot higher than the 4K. It's about 5K, but we're going to crunch that down anyway. So I'm just going to drag these in. And you see I grabbed all of them at one time and brought them into the timeline. I was going to grab this one, but it did not create it. There's some error. So I recreate it there, put this at the end. I might not use all of these clips, but I like bringing them all in at the same time because then I can do something really easy. I can select them all and I can go to audio and I can go voice enhance. Now this is super helpful if you are trying to do a vlog where you're trying to talk and there might be noise in the background. Um, so it's something I always do with my, my footage whenever I get it and bring it in the timeline. So basically today's video is just going to be all time lapses. So I'm going to show you some of the shots and I'm just going to start time lapsing. them. And you'll see I just go up to modify, retime, and I have all my speeds here from 2 to 20. I usually go straight for 20 and then just drag it out and I can find the right time that I'm looking for. Typically I go for like the three to five second mark with time lapses because I don't want them to get too boring, but I want people to have enough time to look around. This one I'm getting my hair cut. It's kind of interesting. And it seems like the perfect amount of time for that. This one isn't as long of a time lapse, so maybe I'll just like double this. I was thinking initially of having all of these fade together, which would be kind of cool too. So another cool trick I'll show you while we're in here um, is I have these tools in 360, and the one I really like is called 360 Patch. So if I just drag this down into here, you can see it automatically patched out where the tripod was. And we can see what that looks like when you hit setup mode. So you see there's where the tripod was. And I can just easily choose whatever target I want. There's what the tripod would look like there. I'm going to make it just look like that. And you can see there, easily masked it out within seconds. This uh, used to be a lot of, a lot of hours of work back, uh, back a couple months ago, and now they've just made it so, so easy. So I don't always patch everything. Um, you can't drag them like that, by the way. You have to go here to drag them. Um, I wish there was a way that I can, like, choose an area to always be grabbing from um, but it's not too hard it doesn't take too long it always goes to the right and I always prefer things like somewhere up front like that that looks pretty good there I'll take it um, this is just going on my YouTube if it's for a professional client then you can you know fine-tune it a bit more and choose certain areas with this one I might not even patch it out because it's on the side there so it's a bit harder to patch it, but let's just see if we were to drag it in here. Yeah, I don't even see the area that it's supposed to be, so I'm just not even going to do it. And actually, if we look down, yeah, we can patch. 
I don't know. I don't think it's necessary on that one. Because it's just a little uh, uh, attachment in the car. This one I'll do. And you can see this one, I, I don't even have to change it. Just chose a perfect area. Looks great to me. So that's what you'll get like, you know, 50% of the time it will just work automatically. This one is a stove top, so obviously you need to play with it a bit more. Um, I don't really even mind showing it in this one, to be honest, because I hate like this double warp thing. I'd rather have something that like looks really there. Another factor, though, that you could do is make the area smaller and bigger, and that could, you know, help your determining factor if you're going to, you know, try and mask it out even slightly. And then you can change the amount of opacity as well, and you can change the target scale. So I can take that little area and make it bigger. This one's a bit trickier. Honestly, this one you'd want to do in Photoshop, so occasionally you will get things like this that, again, you go back to Adobe and it works much better. Yeah, in this case, when I put the bag down, then we get the bag in there. I might just not use it for this one. It's not really a big deal to me. Um, but I will time-lapse these pieces, so just easily jump back up to here. And you can see the speed at which I'm editing this is quite amazing. It does all the rendering uh, later in post. And you're still able to see playback, so I can still get an idea of what this looks like. And by the way, in the beginning of my videos, I always add a title. You can find your titles here, connect title, basic title, right there. And I usually do it for about five seconds in the beginning. And what's great about this is you can easily just hit 360 transform, and now your title is a 360 title meaning that it will warp and wrap to the 360 spherical dimensions of your video. So for my title, I always just put my name, 360 vlog, the number, I think we're on four, six something. Got to go to YouTube to find this. The last one I did, that one's live. This was the last one I edited. Okay, let's see. This is my process, by the way. I wish there was a count. Four, six, seven. Okay, so now we're on four, six, eight. By the way, if you like this video, please check out some of my other 360 vlogs and videos, and make sure to subscribe, because I'm trying to do a lot more tutorials, and I appreciate any comments or feedback. All right, and then I put the location as well. That's my new thing. See it. Now I might lower the size a little bit, and I can also change where it's going to go. And I usually do that here in this one, the uh, uh, compositing area. So I'll go to my 360 transform area, and I'll say latitude, longitude. So I'll say, all right, let's move it up a little bit, maybe. Let's see how it looks there if we watch it like this. And I also, by hitting command shift F, you can jump into your dissolves. I might add a dissolve on the top of it, make it look a little bit nicer. Yeah, it looks pretty legit to me. Alright, so this is UC Berkeley. Looks beautiful. It's driving around. I didn't do one in Trader Joe's, but this is all stuff from Trader Joe's. It's nice you can see the clouds moving. This one I really need to speed up. I kind of like how slow it goes because you see Marlowe, you get all these nice details. Marlowe's my cat, by the way. Um, I don't know. I think I'm going to speed it up. It kind of gets boring after a while. And wow, there's a lot of it. So again, even a massive clip like this during playback, I can easily just jump and speeds it up. So this, sometimes I'll shoot clips that I'll use for a different video. I'm going to use that for a different video. I'm going to use this for a different video about Amazon. Something longer I'm working on all about Amazon. Um, but I will use this clip. I like this clip. Um, this is going to be my ender for the video. But I have one more time lapse. So this time lapse. 
I'm gonna say, saying something here too. I'm gonna try and do a video where I don't do anything with the audio. So this one I was also gonna make another time lapse. I'm gonna kill the audio, I just grab it like that and kill it. Let's speed this up. Eight. It's still gonna be very, very slow. I'm just good at that. It's going to be a short vlog, it's going to be under a minute, but it'll be interesting, let's see. Definitely need some music in here. So usually for my music, I go to my good friend, Billy Gonzalez. And he also goes under the name Be Nasty. So you can find him there um, on SoundCloud. And let's just drag this in. I'm going to turn up my audio here. Hopefully we don't get some feedback. We totally are getting good feedback, so I'm just gonna like try and trim this to the area that I think is okay. Alright, so right around there we'll start it. And so I don't get any more feedback coming, I just need to hear the beginning of that track. And this is why I'm doing basically today's video without um, audio because I need to figure out how I can record audio without getting the feedback. I'm not too good at screen capture in QuickTime, but I think it's possible. Anywho, alright, so we have our audio there. I'm going to just drag another cross dissolve on top of it. Bam, looks great. And I always like to copy Command C and then Command V and put this over and, and tell people uh, thanks for watching. I like to do that with the text. It takes two seconds to do. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Smiley face. All right. I need to put Berkeley. That was already in the beginning. And you see how it's warping. That's all due to the fact that I have this selected right here, 360 transform. And so I'm going to make it go a little bit lower now under latitude. I'm put it on my chest so that way it pops out a bit more. Another thing that you might want to do with your text, by the way, is do a drop shadow. Forgot to do that on this one earlier. Go back to it. It's just right at the bottom there. Just makes it pop a little bit more. All right, now let's do playback. I, I remember with this up until here, it's very cognizant of all the shots. All right, so I get this stuff. I set up the camera really quick there. I'm going to just slightly trim that because I don't like that little setup thing. I imagine I do it at the end too. And I might just make this a little bit faster. So it's under 10 seconds. It's a nice time lapse, but 10 seconds is kind of the max on time lapses. Especially if I'm moving it. Right. Half of that was me talking to the camera. I think I was saying like what audiobook I was listening to. I don't know. Yeah, Fire and Fury. Pretty good audiobook. Highly recommend it. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to trim that beginning part out because it just looks so silly. Uh, and hopefully that will speed this up. Again, I'm going to bring this under like nine seconds. You can see I'm getting the second read by the 35-45 here. Yeah, looking pretty decent. Okay, so now for this I need to do a little trim in here. When we were about to do it, somebody came over and was like, oh, what are you guys doing? And was like, alright, we don't need this. Then she got some on her hat. Like, okay, I'm going to do the 360. Okay, so it happens, I think, right around here. 
Let's check. We only did it one time because she was busy waving that flag all about. So let's see. Cool. That works for me. Alright, I'm just gonna fade out the audio. Maybe I'll keep this video running for a little bit longer, the text, just slightly so that way we can transition this out. By the way, another way you can do that if you don't want to even drag anything on there, is just pull that over. Pretty genius. Um, Apple's pretty great for making this software. And they include these updates, so if you have Final Cut X already, just know you can do those updates. So I'm going to have it there until I worry about that part, and then I'll start to move. So I'll show you one other trick I do. So you have these tabs here, and they're super helpful for things. So I'm going to hit the latitude one, because that was what I was changing earlier. And now it will save the latitude for there. I'll do it for the beginning, too. Cool, remembers it. By the end, though, I want the latitude to go to the center. I want everyone to see it. So I'm just going to hit zero, and it should jump back right in time for the end. Cool. Sweet. So anyway, that's pretty much how I use Final Cut. You can see now it's trying to do some of the rendering. What's really so smart about this software is it only renders when you take your hands off of the keypad or the mouse pad. So I put my hands back on and it's going to pause. Um, so basically now we're able to export this piece. Um, I'm just going to go straight up to File and Share. And it's funny, this is the weird anomaly with Apple. You have to go to Apple device 1080 to export a 4K. I do this mainly for uh, Instagram and YouTube, so it's a little bit compressed down. See there, you got the 4K res, and the file size is pretty small. It's about a minute. I'm going to call this um, GoPro Fusion day and time lapse and I just hit next and it's going to say where I say my desktop and then if you hit command shift 9 command 9? just command 9 <laughs> you can see you're sharing and you can see how long it will take to export so it's already 2% so anyway it will probably take a couple minutes um, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe, let me know what other tutorials you want in the comments, and have a great day.